ba ba da ba 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 shaved totally shaved clean shaven face feels good hi everyone anthony fantano here the internet's busiest music back from my trip with a farmer's tan from south by southwest austin texas austin great city I love you. You're fantastic. Stay the way you are. Stay the same. You're great. You're so good. I want to thank the people at South by Southwest for having the Rock It Out blog, Consequence of Sound, and myself on the video panel that we were on when we came down. That was fantastic. And oh yeah, this uh, little uh, UK paper that you guys may have heard of, like, you know, once or twice or, you know, whatever, uh, called The Guardian wrote about our panel. <laughs> That's linked down there in the description bar. And also while I was down there, I met a lot of needle drops. That was fantastic. People stopped me on the street and were taking pictures with me and shaking hands and asking questions and being cool. Thank you to everyone who said hello. Every one of you. Mwah. And before I went down, you guys may know that I wrote out a list of 15 bands I definitely wanted to see while I was there. And I kind of failed at that. You're just given so many options, and it's like, you know, trying to plan out your dinner before, you know, it's you've actually looked at the menu, you know, and the thing is like, you know, there are lists and things listed on the internet, but when you're there, you're there. And I didn't actually end up seeing Fergus and Geronimo, or Weed Eater, or Cavaller Talk, or Das Racist, or Immortal Technique, or Blue, because I suck. But I did see Off twice. Twice! But still, altogether, I saw like over 30 acts in the span of four days. Which is pretty crazy. And I did bring my camera to most of the shows, but I will say on my first day, I didn't bring my camera out. I didn't know what the situation with the shows would be if they would allow cameras, but uh, in fact they did. So I don't have footage of Anamanaguchi, Telekinesis, Beat Connection, Colin Stetson, off Bad Brains, or Sharon Van Etten, who I saw all on my first day. And uh, on my second day, I didn't get any of the night shots just because I was far away from a lot of the artists who I was trying to shoot, and also I was in a lot of dark venues, so I don't have any video of the Strokes, Twin Shadow, Agalock, or Owen Palette, though I did see all of them. And, uh, you know what, just watch my vlogs if you want to know how I feel about their shows. Uh, but for the most part, let's play what I did shoot as I narrate over it with no sound because I might get in trouble with YouTube if somebody else's music is in my video. So I decided to start my day off with a healthy dose of California's super humanoids. They were fantastic in person. Uh, that camera was in front of me a lot of the time. If you go to South by Southwest, expect a lot of cameras to be between you and the stage. Now, Thursday was actually St. Patrick's Day as well, so a lot of the sets that day were running pretty late, and I went to go see Braids, who you see here, but uh, when they were supposed to be 20 minutes into their set, they were sort of doing sound check. So, though I did catch one song, I had to kind of leave their set early, unfortunately. But still, good live. Here's a sweet band of country bumpkins that I just kind of walked in on. I heard them playing from uh, the outside of uh, Shakespeare's Pub in Austin, and uh, I'm not sure what their name is, but I'm pretty sure you could look them up on that record label that's right behind their heads. It's on the banner. This was the insane line to get into the NPR showcase to go see Wild Flag, and uh, unfortunately I am far too pasty and white to want to stand in the sun for two hours to go see them. Though I'm sure they were great. Uh. This is a garage rock band by the name of Dead Gaze who killed it at the Jackalope. I picked up a 7-inch of theirs. Now keep in mind, this is still St. Patrick's Day. The showcases are running late. Natural Child was supposed to play at this time. I thought I missed them. After I saw these guys, nobody could tell me what the lineup was, so I ended up leaving, missing Natural Child, but still. These guys were awesome, had a ton of energy, and just were sweating all over the place. Crusty acoustic folk punk on the street? Yes. Death metal and pizza under one roof. What more could you ask for? The rural Alberta advantage? Duh. 
They had way more energy in person than they do on record. Their lead singer, Nils, there were a couple tracks where I thought he was going to like freaking bust a vein in his head. I started off my next day of South by Southwest with Gentleman Jesse and his men. Every single time two dudes sing in the same mic, an angel gets its wings. Here is Toro y Moi playing with his band. Yes, awesome to see Chaz fronting some dudes. Uh, they weren't the most animated group live, but Chaz is a much better singer in person than he was on his new record. Just really soulful, enthusiastic at some points. But I did end up leaving to see Glasser, who I have seen once, but now that I've seen them twice, my life is complete. Even though the set ended kind of early because the sun that you see beating down on the tent was beating down on the laptop that they were playing off of, and everything started buzzing and freaking and malfunctioning. And then uh, after that, Kurt Vile came on, and uh, he and the Violators played their psychedelic brand of slacker pop rock that I really need to get around to listening on his new album because they were really good live really reminded me of the velvet underground or crystal stilts or something like that really dug it and then that showcase finished off with aside from bad brains what was probably my favorite show there deer hunter never seen these guys live before and though I'm sure all of you know their most recent records are pretty catchy Pretty immediate, pretty instantaneous, but live. They are such a noise band. They are such a punk band, just playing louder, more strung out versions of the songs that, you know, we all love from their records. Uh, man, I love the textures that they were coming out with. Bradford Cox was freaking out live and fiddling with his amp and using a lot of feedback and putting all these loops on his vocals. It was just sonic abuse, and uh, I was loving every second of it. After that, it was 5 o'clock that day. A lot of the day showcases were ending. The clubs were opening. I saw Times New Viking play over at the Merge Showcase, and they were really fun in person. Nice to see that they are not lo-fi when they are in front of you. And then I went to Emo's to see Liturgy, who was, holy crap, they were loud live. And uh, their drummer is a beast, a freaking beast. Then after liturgy, I ran down to the Luster Pearl to go see the Black Lips, but I came early, just in time to see the group who will win the award for the most members on stage at the same time and the most members on stage with sunglasses at the same time, gangs. They had a bunch of people singing, they had a bunch of people playing they had a bunch of people singing, they had two keyboard players, a bunch of guitarists, a saxophone player, two bassists, a drummer. Even this guy played the cigarette and the water bottle, and sometimes he bent over to touch a laptop. Even Harmar Superstar came out on stage to play that awesome George Michael cover the band came out with last year. Then Black Lips came on, and there was a mosh pit, and we got mooned, and they played O Katrina, and they played Bad Kids, and all the songs that I love. But even though I love Black Lips, I gotta say, my favorite performance that night had to be Little Dragon. They were great, the drummer was fantastic, they played a couple new tracks, they played old favorites, it was just a lot of dance beats. A lot of good grooves, a lot of great sounds, and just a great aura coming off the whole band that could not be fully explained using the English language. You had to be there. The next afternoon at South by Southwest, I started off with some psychedelic linear jams from Woodsman. They were good live. Why they even had two drummers. Then I was bumming around until my next show, and then I just was walking down the road, saw chick chick chick. Then I was bumming around until my next show, and I saw that Chick 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 was playing at Barbarella. Just walked in, said, hey, let's go see him. And they were really great live. They played a Prince cover. They were really energetic. There was a couch in front of the stage for some reason. Nick Offer started jumping on it and freaking out. He dived into the crowd a couple times, too. They were great. Then I went down to a showcase Sammy from the Rocket Out blog was co-sponsoring, and uh, I wanted to see a place to bury strangers, and all rumors of them being loud as hell in person confirmed, and all rumors of them throwing their guitars around confirmed. I'm pretty sure you don't even need to hear this. This is as noisy as it looks. Then I walked out of a place to bury strangers playing, and I heard off playing down the road. I ran down there. And I did not get any footage of them. 
because I was in the mosh pit. But lo and behold, uh, I ended up seeing Chick 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 twice. There you go. They were that good the first time. I met up with this cool dude who is a friend of a friend. His name is Ahmad. And he got me backstage VIP at that show using his magic powers. I have no clue where he gets them from. But I ended up seeing the Dead Milkmen side stage. And Odd Future played after the Dead Milkmen, but for some reason they were not letting us side stage to watch Odd Future, but people could see side stage for the other bands. Um, I don't know why that was, but because I couldn't see Odd Future, I ended up leaving to go see Dominique Young Unique, who's a great MC, a lot of personality, a lot of guts, got a copy of her mixtape. She was really entertaining. I ended up making it down to the Billboard Hip Hop Showcase on the last day of South by Southwest. I saw Big Crit play. A full band came out behind him eventually in the set. Though I wasn't a huge fan of this guy's record, he was great in person. A lot, a lot of energy, and he really knew how to kind of finesse the crowd. It was great. And here is the last performance I saw at South by Southwest. The infamous Odd Future playing the infamous show at the infamous Billboard Showcase where they just kind of walked out on stage. Tyler told everybody in the back that they suck. And he kind of gave the sound guy a piece of his mind, too. Yo. So the sound guy, mic number two fucking sucks. Fix that shit, nigga. His Twitter account does say stuff that he was sort of irked by the club, irked by the security, but still, he didn't really communicate that to the crowd. So when Odd Future left the stage, everybody was really confused as to why. People started chanting Wolfgang, hoping they would come back out, but once that didn't happen, there was a lot of booing and unhappiness especially considering some people probably paid 20 bucks to get into that show just to see Odd Future. So yeah, those are all the clips. Those are the bands that I saw. And uh, yeah, there, there you go. Thanks for watching. Reviews? Soon, very soon. Starting back into the reviews. Got to get back into what this channel is all about. Okay? South by Southwest had a great time. Hope to see more people there next year. Hope to be there next year forever.